Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Gunpowder and Freedom. So today we're changing things up a little bit. Um, this video is not going to be any gun shooting or Tannerite blowing up. Uh, we're actually not even going to be at the Freedom Compound. Um, with it being hunting season here in Pennsylvania, um, I was lucky enough to punch my ticket the first day at about 7... 45 a.m. Um, the neighbors that the the two neighbors that I have weren't as lucky and the couple times that I've been over there to just kind of police the property and check things out um, I've seen that they've been out hunting so I'm trying to be respectful to them and give them you know the opportunity to harvest the deer you know the way I did um, so we're taking it easy on the shooting over at the range here for another week or two Again, just to try to be respectful to the couple neighbors that I am gonna have. Um, so, as we all know, firearms are expensive. Ammunition is very expensive. So this video is gonna give you a little look into how I make my money to support my my hobby of firearms. Um, we're gonna I'm gonna be showing you guys how to pour. A set of concrete countertops um, now this set is for a friend of mine and Rachel's um, she called um, wanted some new countertops done for her office and uh, I, I was lucky enough that she called me and you know it's it's it should be a good one um, they're they're I'm not gonna say they're basic but they they are um, kind of modern modern or yeah Modern. We're doing a gray. We're, we're doing a gray base with uh, some darker gray overlay, um, but that's all stuff that you're gonna see. So let's go into the garage, and I'll show you what we have going on. Okay, guys. So just to kind of give you a rundown on how our the countertop division of my dad's company works is. You know whether it's an exterior countertop or an interior countertop more times than not um, what we do is we make an appointment with them with the customer to give them a quote and everything and provided they like the quote uh, we make templates now this is this is the template I made for um, the set that I'm doing now it's basically two identical pieces so right there you can see that Oop. that fits in right like that for the most part um, whenever we do these, we try to label as much stuff as we can. So this is the top as you know, you walk into the room, that's the top. So this is the front side here. Um, I put it in backwards. So, well, technically no, I didn't. And you'll understand that here in a second. So this, this is the top. This is real life. You're looking down on it. Here's the front. So I marked that, you know, top, front, and then right here, FE means finished edge. So whenever we pour these, the way I formed them, I know that this edge is going to be finished. So I need to make sure that the piece of forming material I put here is in perfect condition. Uh, right here is a wall. There's another wall back there. That's the back. And then there's another wall. So you know, we want the edges to be as nice as possible, but if they're going up against the wall, you don't really see them. So, you know, if there's a, if there's a little defect in them, you know, it's on the side, nobody's ever going to see it. So, but I just flipped it over because that's the way you have to form them and pour them. Whenever you form them, you need to make sure your template gets flipped upside down. So the, whatever surface is touching the malamine, this is eventually going to be the top and the top or this in the side that we trowel smooth is going to be the bottom. So you basically just flip this over after you pour them. So you need to make sure that your base malamine is, sorry, I'm hanging that template back up. You need to make sure this area is clean, is as clean as possible and defect free. So I got a little bit of dirt and debris on here. I'm just going to wipe that off real quick. Um, I forgot to put a screw in over there, so I got to do that. And then for reinforcement on these, we use Durawall. It's a nice 
nice wire that uh, it's got a very high tensile strength. Um, so we use that. We use fiber mesh, which is over on the workbench. Uh, we use super plasticizer and we pour these with as little water as possible so that as they dry and as they cure, there's as less shrinkage, yes, shrinkage, as possible. Um, the more water you add to your concrete, the weaker it becomes. Um, now the range that our countertops are usually in whenever we're done pouring is about 10 to 12,000 PSI. Uh, and it, these countertops are being poured at an inch and a half thick. So compare that to a four inch thick driveway or a five inch thick driveway that tests at four to 5,000 PSI. In theory, you can park a car on these bad boys. So we're gonna get our forming material all, uh, all cleaned up, uh, get the camera set up outside and get mixing up some concrete. Okay, so right here I have our mortar mixer that we use for these. Um, it is a little bit colder out, so I have it warming up right now. And all the way over here on the back side of my red trailer, uh, I had to run home for a bit before I did this, so I had to cover them with a traction mat just to make sure they were good. I have um, all of our pouring material. Well, most of it. Give me two seconds. Right there, five bags of sand, one bag of Portland. That's the ratio we use. Now, the one video I made for my dad's channel, I had a bunch of people asking me why I don't pull the truck closer, blah, blah, blah. Um, usually when I have it in my pickup truck, I know it sounds probably weird, it makes me sound like a little sissy, but I don't like a bunch of dust to get on my truck. So that's why I usually keep my pickup truck parked away, but put on a couple pounds over Thanksgiving so I'm keeping uh, that pulled back there carrying that stuff over try to burn off a couple of these pounds before we get into the off season ah jokes are fun okay, so right here we have bucket of water number one mixed with our super plasticizer uh, you want to make sure you mix the super P in with the water that way it kind of mixes in really nice as you add it into the mixture we have our bag of microfiber here. Uh, we used to weigh that out, but I don't know, just kind of the microfiber you really can't overdo it with. All you're, at, all you're doing is just adding more strength to your mix with that. So I usually do about three to four good handfuls. Uh, when we did weigh them out, uh, forget I even forget the measurement. It's been so long since we actually did that, but it was it ended up being like two good handfuls in a little bit so a little bit more microfiber is good whatever and then again there is the uh sand in portland so i'm gonna go ahead and get the camera set up uh, i'm gonna do this on time lapse and start what we do is we'll mix in three bags of sand one bag of portland cement uh, our microfiber then I'll mix in uh, some of the water, throw the rest of the sand in, then add the rest of the water. One thing I wanted to point out, when I was adding the microfiber in, you take a handful of it and you like kind of sprinkle it in to break it up. That way it mixes in nice and loose. Um, if you don't do that, you just take handfuls and chuck it in. A lot of times you'll end up with like clumps in your concrete mix. You don't want to do that because as you're polishing it, and you'll see that in later steps, as you're polishing it, you'll get these big pockets of microfiber and it just doesn't look. So when you're adding the microfiber in, you want to kind of sprinkle it in. Uh, and then I like to do a lot of the dry ingredients first. That way it mixes up a lot easier. I saved two bags of sand for the very end. That way we can kind of, if we need to add a little bit more water, if it gets too tight, we have that room to adjust. Whereas if you add everything in now and then you add your water and it's too loose, you're gonna run into some trouble because if you add, like I said in the garage, if you add too much water into your mix, um, it's gonna weaken the concrete, it's not good. So do that. Uh, save two bags of sand to 
to add in at the end. If it gets too tight, you can add a little bit more water. So just wanted to point that out. So now when I get to this step and I'm adding the last two bags of sand, I like to let it just trickle in real slow like that. That way it doesn't clump up. It doesn't get, you know, all bunched together. And yet, you know, this way it mixes in really nice. So this is why I like to do it this way. Give a little shake. Get some more. Yeah. Areas up about halfway so we can get the wire put in. Um, now they said they kind of wanted, you know, some color variation, but basically just told me to have fun with it and whatever I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pack, I'm going to pack all the edges in really nice and tight. That way we get a good crisp edge. Um, the middles, I'm not going to pack in too tight just so that we can have some, some open cavities that are going to allow for our uh, secondary color to fill in. Give them some, uh, some contrast there. cannot stress this enough. If you're going to try this on your own, wear gloves because this stuff will suck the moisture out of your hand. hands. You'll be left with really, really dry skin. It's not good. So wear gloves. Just kind of break it up and put, you know, work it towards the edge. You want to pack that edge in. Again, you want nice, crisp, crisp corners. Okay, so we got all of our corners packed in on this one, so now we're just gonna kind of level all this off so that we can get our wire. I always try to fill these up about halfway to two thirds of the way full before I put the wire in. Because if you don't do that and your wire is too close to the surface underneath, you'll get uh, what we call ghosting lines. You won't see the wire, but there will be these, how do I want to explain this? They'll, they will leave lines in the surface. And uh, you know, if you've ever seen it, if you've never seen it and it happens, you'll know right away what it is. It's, uh, it's something that you're not gonna polish out. It's not gonna, it's, it sucks when it happens. So I've only ever had it happen once. Luckily it was a piece going in my house and it was just a bench, so it didn't really matter. Um, but yeah, you always wanna make sure the wire is closer to your, the, the top here, which will eventually be the bottom. So pay attention to that. You always want to check to make sure if your wire has a bend in it. If it does, I try to put it so the bend is facing up. That way, if it ever 
you know, after we're done here, if it decides it wants to work its way up and pop out, we can always cut it off. No harm, no foul. As you can see, we have a good, a, a good bit of wire in here. So reinforcement, we're good. Always make sure your wire is away from your edges. I've seen videos on YouTube of people doing this, putting the wire in or putting the reinforcement on, not paying attention, and it's right next to their face. So as they do this next step, it works over, and as they're polishing, you end up seeing it. So always be careful of that. Now that we have our wiring, we're going to go ahead and pop it with a few more shovel pulls of concrete. We will try it flat and then straight edge it down. Keep in mind that the next step we're going to be straight edging. So basically right now all I'm looking for is to get these mounds of concrete down flat, get it close to the height of the edge, so that as we straight edge, the straight edge will stay on our forms and just kind of cut any high concrete back. So we're not looking for smooth just yet, we're just looking to, uh, to pop it. From work, found my uh, shipment of nine millimeter rounds came in. So as soon as hunting season's over, back to shooting. We're all stocked up. Okay, so now that we have this close, I'm gonna grab the straight edge, and we'll uh, we'll just start at one end and work it off, making sure that the bottom is nice and flat. That way, whenever we sit it on the cabinetry, it's all nice and flat. We're not going to have any rocking back and forth. You usually start a couple inches in from, uh, from the end I'm actually starting at. And just kind of work it back. This way will help to kind of, you know, cut this end down. to be a good starting point. Um, if I have a little hole like that, I can just kind of pick them up, fill it in, get a nice true start. Because sometimes what happens is as you work the pumpkin back and forth, it'll want to pull. So doing that just kind of kind of helps to keep the end flat. Oh, we can get those. So we can get those. So what we're looking for here we want to keep the straight edge pretty flat, tilt it back ever so slightly. Uh, this way it's going to help to cut down any of the high concrete. So as you can see, we're getting a mound of concrete right here, which means this was too high. So what we can do is the areas that didn't get it, like here, a little bit here, we can take a little bit of this, 
sprinkle it on these low spots. Take our straight edge, turn it up on edge, and just kind of work that concrete into those low spots. And then re, uh, re straight it. It's been a long week. the truer it's going to be. If you start uh, sawing it too much, you'll just end up pulling the concrete away from the sides. down a little bit, I always like to go back and hit it a couple more times, up on edge, that way it kind of flattens, flattens everything off a little bit nicer. You end up with some holes, like I said, just grab some of your excess concrete here, sprinkle it right on top, smooge it back in, how about that for a word? And if you end up getting too much concrete in front of your straight edge, just grab it and throw it off. Right like that. Grab our trowel, wherever it went. And this is where we look for uh, nice and smooth. So if you straight edge it properly, all you should really need is one or two swipes with your with your trowel. and shroud we're going to go ahead and cover it with a piece of plastic uh, that way it's going to hold the moisture in um, you get you get it um, to cure rather than dry uh, the longer the concrete takes to cure the stronger it's going to be Thank <laughs> you. 
It's always fun to try to figure out how to do this when you're by yourself. Kind of. 